Welcome everyone to the 2022 Brooklyn Film Festival. I'm Barbara Vasconez, documentary programmer. And today I have the honor to have David here. Hi, David. Hello, my dear Barbara. How are you? I'm thriving. How are you doing? I'm doing amazing. Thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart uh, for having my movie. It's really important. This is a very, very important film festival. And to have it there, it really means the world. And, and on the behalf of Mr. Ali Tahari, uh, really thank you so much for um, taking this, this time to watch the movie and to uh, bring his story also to, to life. Thank you again. Well, thank you for making this story. So what, what drew you to film make this story? Absolutely. Well, this was my first film, my very first film. So I directed before some... Um, uh, some music videos, extra, but that was really my uh, my my first, uh, I would say, feature film. So it just happened during COVID that I was doing before I'm more of a stage guy. So I directed and produced like over a hundred stage productions. So um, I knew that the movies would be my my next thing. And 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 just you know, I, I met Ali before, and I invited him to a film festival I'm producing, and I got to know more of his story. And I got this opportunity to do a documentary. And, and I was like, okay, who should I do a movie about? And I thought of Eddie Tahari and, and then we met and we got along uh, very well. And he was very kind to give me his time and also to give me really his story. So we, we bounded really perfectly. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Yeah, I was going to ask you what was like, how was that relationship and like making this movie and everything? What was that? Yeah, like? well, I, I I learned also on that movie everything. I learned um, movie editing. I learned uh, how just to do a movie, you know, but I, I watched so many movies that I felt that I did. I knew what I wanted to see and not to see. You know, I studied a lot of uh, uh, fashion films, fashion documentaries, or just documentaries. So I knew what I wanted to do, but also I wanted to have my own touch, you know, and wow. uh, and also to fit with uh, Ellie's personality. So um, I, I like the connection, like two people sitting and, and he tells me his story. And, and the good thing is that he lives in New York and mm -hmm. a lot of his life is in New York. So we could go to the locations like in Central Park or all the places where, where he was. So we had this incredible bound and, and still today you know he's someone I consider as a very very close friend and, and you get so inspired just by being with him you know every time I'm near him like I'm swelling in the back, you know? <laughs> I'm like mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, when yeah, he calls yeah. me I'm like you know <laughs> hello <laughs> hi yeah <laughs> I like said shaking. to people Ooh. around me I said yeah people around me <laughs> Yes, hi, Ken. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. When I was coordinating some conversations with some like high talent for my job, uh -huh. every time they call, I'd be like, shh, 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 I'm on the phone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I love that. So this is would be considered your first feature, right? Now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And and now I have following the success of that movie, because that movie was supposed to go. Uh, when I did it, it was supposed to go directly to Amazon platform, you know, mm -hmm. that, that was really the, the, the goal originally. And, and then as I was putting some uh, behind the scenes on Facebook and, mm -hmm. and in Instagram before my account was hacked, but uh, <laughs> uh, then people started to reach out uh, and say, wow, we'd love to to know more about that movie. It looks like it's going to be great. And, and I, I got selected in over 100 film festival, but yours is my favorite. Yes. <laughs> and <laughs> and won many, many awards and, and, and you know, it's gonna go a little bit all over the place. So, um, but then, um, then after uh, uh, following the success of that movie, I have now six new documentaries. So wow. half of them were already filmed. I'm doing the editing, and uh, three of them I still need to shoot a couple of um, uh, of scenes. But um, it, I'm going to do that this summer. But uh, yeah, it became something that apparently I have uh, 
some uh, some good ideas and uh, and and because I think because I'm not a journalist because I'm I'm also an artist you know um, I think I have more that bound with the people I'm interviewing you know? yeah yeah you have that that skill behind you well, that's <laughs> that's awesome how long did this film take you oh a year a year a year yeah and I'm very lucky that it was a year of uh, COVID you know in the sense that <laughs> I didn't have any stage productions. Because, by example, I just finished an off-Broadway musical, uh, The Ten Commandments, and for two months, I was not <laughs> able even to, to sit in front of the computer to open any movie files, you know, because yeah. uh, I was so focused on the, on, on the other show. So <clears throat> I'm very glad that I didn't have any, I would say, stage production over the course of that movie, because I was able to go on YouTube and check the tutorial on how to edit on Final Cut Pro. You know? <laughs> so uh, I learned really uh, out of that, you know, because I had the time and the patience and, and I was wow. uh, I was not in that, I would say, routine of traveling, of uh, rehearsals, of performances, because you right. cannot edit a movie when you have a show in the night. You know, I, I really can't, because you're looking at the watch, what time is it, what time, you know, so I... Um, um, and and I, it was such a good time for me because, you know, I would spend the whole day just working on it, like from uh, I would work sometimes I would look at the time, what time is it? And it was like 6 a.m., you know, so I would work all night editing it, but without seeing the time. And that's really a moment that I really loved. And I'm so glad that I learned how to edit because I could do the changes myself and see how it looks like. Uh, and take the time to think for a day or two and then to come back. So that was a really good. But yeah, we started to film in July uh, 2020. I almost died from COVID. So that was a month. Yeah, yeah. A month oh, or two. God. Oh, yeah. yeah no, worst, worst thing ever. Worst thing ever. That's why when the vaccine came out, I said, like, give me 10 doses. <laughs> Don't <laughs> have that ever again. <laughs> oh, my so, God. God. Yeah, no, no, and I'm strong. I'm really strong. But you are that's... strong because you managed to get out of that and make a movie. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, but that that was also part. It's funny you said that, Barbara, but that that was also part of why I wanted to do that movie because I realized that you have only one life, you know, and that you know you shouldn't wait tomorrow to do things that you can do today because you never know where life can can take you and and uh, you know when I, I saw it took me weeks just to be able to sit on the chair and breathe you know then you're like oh okay well then <laughs> next time you can do that normally like think of all the great things that you could have done that you haven't done so uh, the movie was definitely something and and yeah no, I'm, I'm very happy that I had really the patience to 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 really learn and also um I I I, I do in my shows, you know, I, I know how to try out stuff, you know, oh. before you bring it to the big crowd to, to try it out, you know, like stand up comedy, uh, they do, they go to try it in front of a small audience yeah. before they bring it, you know, uh, and so I was able to try the movie uh, in front of some small audiences, like I had a friend or two coming at home watching the movie, telling me what they get, what they didn't get. And because it was also COVID, people had more time. And the good thing, because I had the movie in my computer and all the files and everything, um, even when I will see the movie in a movie theater, in a film festival, I would be like, oh, maybe I should change that. Maybe I should, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I learned a lot. And also, by example, you have um, Jewish film festivals, by example. So I made the movie more Jewish because there were some moments in the interview where uh, Ellie spoke more of his Jewish background. So I added more of that. When, when I had, uh, uh, by example, fashion film festivals, I added more fashion into it, like more fashion shows into it. So that was really uh, uh, one of the great uh, assets that I had. It's great investment. It's, was to learn how to edit. But I must say that you guys have for me the most defined, the best version that this movie can have, guaranteed, you know? <laughs> oh, I love that. Well, I love that you took the time to like perfect the film and even curate it 
for specific festivals, which I think, you know, mm -hmm. is an interesting thing because I think that's when people are able to connect with the film more. Mm -hmm. Not that they wouldn't have, like if with this version that we saw, but I, I feel like your curating is specifically for your audience. And I think that's, I think that's why your film was as successful as it is. And it's also good to hear that I'm sorry that you got sick and we're like really, really on that line, but I'm I'm happy to hear that you took this time to kind of like perfect a skill and learn yeah, something yeah. and not yeah. just see it as like, oh I'm, like this is yeah. it. But this is it's really it's really good to hear I that. I mean by by mid-April, I was out of uh of trouble because I got COVID in March 2020. I was really one of the kind of the the, the first wave you know Me too. Uh, but 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 after right away I took a paper and I was like okay we're gonna stay there for a long time <laughs> so it's not yeah. just a matter of two weeks so I I I knew that I that I wanted to do things and also the fact that I became a filmmaker really an established now filmmaker because I have six more movies mm -hmm. when I by example did my off-broadway production just recent which was the first full scale production I was doing since, since COVID. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I used to project, you know, in the background, um, you know, like uh, uh, images of the decor, you know? And I was like, wait, now I know how to edit movies. Let me do something better. And I started to do uh, video animation, 3D video animation, changing scenes and all of that. So that really made me benefit um, a lot of, uh, of uh, I would say even the shows and and now I have offered to to produce and co-produce uh, TV series and and TV shows so I'm I'm very 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 excited and uh, um, more than ever I think the 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 world is more open for new stories and a lot I think there's more of a place for documentaries because now I think in narrative the story has been. You know, it's kind of always the same thing there and there. Yeah. The guy had to save the world or, you know, there was a robbery or this person is in love with that person. The other one is jealous. So I think with documentaries, I always wanted to do uh, not just a great movie or a good movie, but a movie that people can enjoy. Yeah. And as I do for my show, something that goes, I go direct to the meat. Like I don't hold like a second too long you know because i'm very impatient and i like that things go really there and also that at the end of the movie you you will see a couple of phrases because i i also want people to be inspired yes from the the person I interview that's why i put this kind of a typewriter thing you will see you know you you you, you saw the movie um but also at the end to get inspired by something. And one of the greatest things that I had with all the Q and A's I had with audience members was, I think this movie should be watched by every children in the world to think that everything is possible. In case you believe you were born in the wrong side of, uh, of, of life, you know, that it is possible that you can come out uh, of it. and and. That's really also what I wanted to show in this movie, you know. <laughs> That's really special. I think a lot of people, especially now, need to hear that. I know I, I've been conducting interviews like all day and like either with Brooklyn or my other job and just like mm -hmm. talking to people like, oh, always give you a little sense of like advice of like how to really treat yourself. And uh, I do think following your dreams is very important, but, you know, doing the work is how you yeah. get there. And you seem to have done all the work and that oh, is so you. exciting for you. So uh, we have to wrap up, but- No, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have more time to talk. Oh, <laughs> no, but really, Barbara, from the bottom of my heart, it means the world to me to be part of this important, very, very important film festival. And uh, it, it, it's, it, it's the whole world it means to me, really. So um i'm so 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 honored and extremely grateful that not just you took the time to watch it <laughs> but on top of that to select it and you're doing such an amazing work and Addison 
uh, Morgan, I also want to give her a shout out. Um, she's doing such an amazing work and all your team over there. And uh, it's without film festivals, without your film festival, there, there is no movies, you know, because it's really the medium, the platform of filmmakers, it is film festivals. So I, I'm, I'm really, really grateful and thank you for doing this amazing, amazing work that that really really means a lot you know oh well we're we're here to we're here to help you and and, and, and your place is so here. well organized i can tell your place with Thank the closing you. and the mm -hmm. I, I admire I, you I, I admire. what is written over there shakers what is it it's a movie it's a documentary well what is it shirkers it's a archival documentary of a film that was never made because it was stolen oh and you did that I didn't do it. It's a, it's a, I, we showed that movie at a theater I used to work at and that was the original poster, but Netflix didn't accept it. So they had to redo the posters and they was, they were already at our theater. So I took it. Oh, wow. No, Cause it's cool. Really cool. Cause it's really cool. And you have um, a cat. And and I, yeah, a cat. I, have, I have a cat. I have one there and then one there. They're, oh, you have two cats. I do. They're they're hanging out yeah. right now. They're like, you know yeah. what? I wish I had a dog, but you know. Oh, dogs! No, yeah. I love dogs, but I can't take care of them. <laughs> yeah, but you know, I, every time I I had a, a, a girlfriend and she would uh, say, "Oh my God, this dog is so cute!" and then I was like, "Come on, stop to talk. Uh <laughs> say something nice about me for once," you know. But now I get it. Now yeah. I get it. I don't know if it's age. If I got older, but now when I see a dog, I'm like, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah, that's my friend. She runs up to strangers with dogs and I'm like, you're going to get kidnapped one day. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much for uh, being here and congratulations. And for everyone watching at home, I hope you enjoyed this documentary. You can keep watching films from now to the 12th online and in person. Enjoy the Brooklyn Film Festival. Thank you again, David. Thank you, Barbara. We love you. Thank you Bye. so much. Bye.